So let's have a lesson on this prelude by Bach. Um, this comes from his suite in E minor, BWV 996. I recently put out a sheet music edition of the entire suite, all the movements. And uh, there's a link for that underneath the video. And there's lots of different options in terms of which types of sheet music you wish to use. Um, ranging from a fully fingered edition with notation only to um, a unfingered notation version and also a tab version for those who need it. So I do these weekly lessons. Um, this one took a little bit longer because um, it's a, quite an advanced piece in terms of um, how difficult it is to play. So, um, but I've also listed um, some professional performances. So if you follow that link, you can also see some of my recommended performances of the work by professional guitarists. Um, so for today, because this is such an advanced piece, I'm going to talk about some musical ideas and some ways to approach the practicing rather than doing like a full on like how to play because and like the reason I say that is because you really need to work your way up to this level. Um, there's a number of easier pieces by Bach that you could approach first. Um, things like the Prelude BWV 999, um, that would be a good one, and um, and some of the easier movements of the various suites, of course, um, maybe some of the arrangements of the cello suites, and of course, play other Baroque music by um, lute players such as Weiss and whatnot, so you get an idea of what performance practices might be appropriate to a piece like this. Um, when I was younger, I used to listen to a lot of just piano performances like Glenn Gould and stuff, but that was very limited. Um, it really kind of like put me into this very narrow interpretation. But uh, you want to listen to lots of Bach. The cantatas are really great to hear because you hear instruments playing the themes, but you also hear voice singing it. Um, that'll give you a, a better picture of what Bach can be. Um, sometimes we kind of make Bach very chunky um, and, and very pianistic, but when you listen to the cantatas, for example, you hear so much um, a, a rich legato nature and, and so much phrasing and whatnot. So lots of listening and lots of working your way up to this piece. So this piece has two sections, right? It has the prelude section and it has the presto fugue. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. Now, the prelude. When you hear um, professionals play this piece, you're going to hear lots of different interpretations for the rhythm. Some performers, and we're talking about the world's greatest performers, um, are very free with the rhythm. Like, they're treating it um, very improvisatory, so they're kind of like, they're giving you one phrase at a time, and uh, you can't necessarily, um, like, put a metronome on and follow their beat. Um, I'm not saying that their beat doesn't make sense. You can anticipate their beat and feel the rhythm, but it's much more free. And then there's other performers who try to play it much more in time. And... Um, each way of approaching the piece has its merits. Um, freely improvised is going to feel um, uh, very nice phrasing-wise and, um, and uh, give it a certain type of mood. And then um, a more rhythmic performance might give it more momentum and forward movement. Um, I try to take the middle ground. And in this piece, there's a couple of little sections that are pretty tough to play in time. And when I hear people play them in time, um, they can sound a little harsh, like bar 14. Those 64th notes uh, don't always sound that great when people try to put them in time. So, um, okay, prelude. The way I recommend you practice this is first, practice it with a metronome. Make sure you know the rhythms and that you can play the rhythms properly. That means putting the metronome down to a very low tempo, like 40, and... Um, and, and practicing it that way. And it'll seem very harsh to practice it that way, but I think making sure that you can play the written rhythms is very important. The second stage that I would approach it is that you turn the metronome off, but you make sure you're really feeling the beat. Um, you know, thump, thump. Um, 
So, uh, but, you know, saying it out loud, tapping your foot, making sure that you indeed um, know where the beat is. Um, even if you stretch the rhythm, like I was stretching the rhythm a little bit there. Um, but people should be able to anticipate where your beat is, even if you're stretching the rhythm a little bit. And then, of course, at major cadences, um, it's okay to, like, give some extra space, you know, after these things. You know, that, that E chord, um, E minor chord, only had one beat, but I gave it a little bit more because it, it kind of felt like an end and then something new was beginning. So you can let that emerge naturally. But I would just be careful that you um, have gone through the metronome. You do understand the rhythms, because if you don't, I think you're missing something. Um, Bach wrote you know, these rhythms, and the copyist copied them out for the manuscript. But um, they're as close as we can get to the original intentions of the composer. So um, make sure that you at least understand them well. Um, not too much else to say about the, the opening prelude there. Just feel the pulse. Um, there's a couple tricky parts and, and fast little passages, but mainly based on interpretation, so you just have to kind of go through it in that way. Um, I stretched some of the, the lines like... That's not really the rhythm. I kind of pause. You know, at the top, but that's, that's interpretive um, interpretation that you can choose. Um, bar 14 has those 64th notes. Um, if I tried to play them like right in time, it'd be just so wild. You know, like, it just sounds, it sounds kind of ludicrous. Um, so I take my, I just take more time. Um, I want it to sound uh, a certain way, so I do take some time. But again, you can listen to various performances and, and make a choice on that. So for the fugue, or the presto, um, it, it can be played at various speeds. Of course, I would like to play it a little bit faster, but for the sake of, of this week's lesson, uh, that's the, the tempo I chose. Um, a fugue, if you don't know what a fugue is, uh, look it up. I can't, I can't go into it too deeply right now, but essentially it's an imitative work where a small motif, um, a subject, we call it a subject, um, gets used all over the place. And sometimes there's a counter subject as well. So another little theme that um, overlaps and interacts and it's like a big puzzle of the different motifs. Um, so th that's putting it in, in a, like a very um, simplistic way, but that's the basic idea. So in this piece, you know, even at the first introduction of that, of that subject, the bass voice interrupts the subject during it. It's called like a stretto. Um, it interrupts with the subject again. So listen to that opening. Sorry. Let me do that again. So you can hear on the upper voice and the lower voice the same subject, right? But they're overlapping. And then throughout the whole piece, you're going to hear this. And the, these little counter subjects like, you know, keep coming up too. Happens in the next bar. And, you know, so you're going to hear a lot of those things. Um, motifs throughout, just like littered throughout the piece. Sometimes they're overlapping, sometimes they're they're right next to each other, sometimes they're spaced apart. So very complex. So you have to be listening and looking for the, those motifs at all time. And of course it's hard to play them, it's hard to articulate them because there's so much going on. Like even there I kind of clipped the lower clip that D just a little bit there. Um, so it can be very difficult with all these fingerings to do a, um, a quality interpretation of the work. And I think that's what it comes down to is that 
Um, certain levels of players can play this piece, um, for sure. They can get around the fingering, they can pump it out. Um, but then when you listen to professionals, what you're listening for is not whether they can play it. Being able to play it is just a basic requirement of playing the piece. It's whether you can control those motifs and get them to come out and to phrase them while all this activity is happening, these shifts and things like that. So um, that's what you're looking for in that section too. And again, I would play with the metronome just to make sure you're, you have it in time, but then you can turn it off and, and relax around the cadences, right? that you're hearing all those motifs now. All right. You know, it happens, There's the motif is everywhere. It's always present in this particular work. Lower voice, upper voice. Ah, I can't speak into it. piece like that because it's, it's a it's working my brain too much but um that's the challenge of the piece um bringing out all the musical ideas and along with the fingerings and i i've tried to take um, a middle ground in terms of playability and um and sensitivity to the motifs so sometimes i will drop a fingering even if it clips the the motif just like a little bit uh, for practical reasons and that's when multiple editions will start to differ some editions will really focus on, on the perfect fingering for the music. But these are difficult works. Um, and if you can't perform the piece, um, that's a problem as well. Um, you know, th these pieces give professionals a run for their money, right? So um, other editions um, will go too far towards the practical side. They'll be, make them very playable, but the motifs are starting to get like pre-washed out or um, there's not enough attention to them. So... Um, I try to take the middle ground in mind and make sure the motif is well presented while making the fingerings as practical as possible. But these are difficult works and there's certainly times when uh, the fingering gets pretty, pretty wacky. So I, I hope you enjoy the piece. Um, any serious performer will probably want multiple editions, but I hope that mine uh, gives you something to think about and that you can engage with and is uh, readily available along with the video.